Okay, time for another new filament. This is from Sunlu. We haven't used Sunlu before. And they have pretty good prices, and uh, I needed a clear uh, PETG filament. So this is uh, one kilogram. It's made in China. And this talks about all the different filaments that they offer. And it says it's tangle-free, bubble-free, great flexibility, and smooth printing. That's what we want. <clears throat> all right, so let's open this up. All right, so it's got a nice uh, vacuum on. Not quite as tight a vacuum as some other filaments I've gotten, but plenty good enough. And it's got a uh, desiccant packet in it. So let's open this up. All right, so there's a desiccant packet. So it's got a, uh, a tag here that's on the filament, which is very handy to keep you from losing control of the end of the filament so that it doesn't get tangled. So the, the, the wrapping looks really good. A little bit of cross wrapping here, but it looks fine. Looks very clear. It says it prints from 230 to 240, which is good. We like to print all of our filament at 237, so hopefully that'll work out. We're gonna be testing that. That's 1.5 millimeters in diameter. So until I got this film, I had been using this uh, sun, uh, Yo Yi filament for PETG, but they don't seem to be selling on Amazon anymore. I couldn't find them, at least in California. So I also like to use um, California filament PETG. That's my favorite uh, PETG, but they don't seem to have a super good transparent for some reason. In any case, this is cheaper, so hopefully it'll work. I've seen some good reviews on other uh, YouTube channels that says they like Sunlu, so give it a try. We're out of this, so we're going to be doing our regular test. We're going to do the temperature test and the layer adhesion test and bed adhesion. And then we're going to, instead of doing a fun project, we're going to print an actual product that I'm making. So I'm making these, these uh, uh, containers for... Uh, Star Wars uh, Camptona, which is like a Star Wars safe. So I'll, I'll, I'll show that at the end, how these work inside that. So let's go ahead and weigh this and see how much, how much we got versus what they say. Again, it says one kilogram, but you never know. There's, it's usually plus or minus 50 grams is what most manufacturers say. So it says 11.05. Okay, so that's probably, so we're probably under one kilogram, because usually most reels weigh at least 135, 150 uh, grams. So I don't have an empty reel of this, because this is the first time I printed with it, but a similar, this reel is somewhat similar. So let's see how much this weighs. Yeah, so this reel, empty uh, Yo Yi reel, weighs 175 grams, 168 grams. So if you use this as a tear, yeah, it's not, a, it's not an exact exact uh, copy of this. Like this is slightly bigger diameter, but anyway. So this is, we have 936. So I'm guessing we're about 50 grams under, but we'll find out eventually at the end when we find out how much this reel, reel weighs, which I won't have on this video, but if we keep using this filament, eventually we'll have a um, empty reel we can use for tearing our weights. But anyway, it's within 50 grams, so I guess that's what the standard is. All right, let's go ahead and do our temperature test, and we'll see how, how it goes from there. All right, so we're doing our usual temperature test. Actually, this one's slightly different. We've been printing all of our PETG at 237, so I did, made a shorter one. Then I've done some other tests because I want to save some time. So it should print in this, in this region, and um, this project is available on Thingiverse for free. I have a link to it in the show notes. So it tests bridging to see if there's any drooping so it, it can see how well your cooling is working. Also strength by how strong these bridges are and also again this is also kind of a cooling thing is how well it does these little pointy uh, cones here. 
if the top is all blobbed up or not printed, if it's all blobbed up, it means it's, things are too hot and it's not being cooled properly. If it's uh, chopped off, then there's it's extrusion problems. It's uh, it's too cold, so it's not extruding properly. So this is enough to get to just uh, satisfy ourselves that um, 237 is a good temperature. It could, you know, could print a slightly different temperature, but it's easier to print all of your of one particular type of filament at the same temperature if you can. So that's what I tried to do. All right, so we're going to uh, render this. So this uh, SCAD file, this is Open SCAD. It's a 3D modeling language. So I'll have a link to this in the show notes too. That's for free as well. And um, it's, it's part of the Thingiverse project, yeah. All right, so that rendered. So we'll save it to an STL file, and then we'll import it into Simplify 3D. All right, so here's our project in Simplify 3D. This is version 5, 5.1.2. So some of the parts I, I have, I use version 4 because it works better. Uh, but I try to use version 5 when I can, any new projects. I had a few problems with version 5. There's still some bugs in it that uh, version 4 doesn't have, so second case I have to revert back to version 4. In any case, these kind of projects work fine. So with this temperature tower, you need to change the temperature as you go through the layers here. So we do that in the in this process settings. So let's go over a few things about PT, this is PLA, but it's PTG. So I use a 1.0 extrusion multiplier and to prevent stringing, I set my retract speed at 1800. So the default, I believe, is 1200. Although if I set it for PTG, what does it do? It's not going to change anything. Yeah. All right. So we're, well, we're not going to mess with that now. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to change it. I don't think it's going to change anything now that I already changed things. Yeah. Oh, it did change it. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to do that anyway because I feel like it. Okay, so anyway, so I use 1800 for uh, retract speed and extrusion multiplier 1.0. And then uh, for layers, we're doing uh, 0 0.2 uh, layers, which is the standard for a 4 milli 0.4 millimeter extrusion head. Later on, when we do another test, we're going to change this to 0.3, because that's what we're going to print at for our final thing. So no, no additions, then infill. I'm doing 20%. It's fine for this project. And it's going to ask us about supports, but we don't want to do supports because we want to see how this bridging works. So for temperature, for P PTG, I print with a 60 degree bed temperature. That seems to work the best. And here, here's where we set up our temperature layer. So the first uh, 52 layers, the first 18 layers, or 17 layers, is this base. And then the next layers up through... Uh, 52 is this is this bridge here and then so on and so forth so so at layer 53 is the, the 237 star so we set the temperature to that so as we go up through the bridges here we change the temperature so the simple 3d makes this really easy to do so that's why I like it for that now for cooling for PTG I usually use 5% fan oh, I have to use 10% fan a few times if it's a very small project with not a lot of movement uh, in a very confined area, then I want to use more more fan. But for most parts where you're moving around and printing and not staying in one area, 5% is good. It just sticks together better. And we can adjust that if we need to. So Now for speeds, I've tried increasing this. The default speed for PLA, and what I usually use is 3600 millimeters per minute. I've tried increasing this for P PTG, but it just doesn't work. It just, it just doesn't stick together. The layers don't, don't adhere. So I have to print slower, so 3,000. Now the XY travel speed I increased. The uh, PLA speed default is 4,800. Uh, so I, I set this higher for PTG just because I'm trying to make up a little bit of this time. But usually this doesn't affect your length of your print very much. So it doesn't make that much difference. And then uh, for advanced, I like to use single for to get as much infill as possible. I allow single extrusions for the walls, and I allow gap fill. Now, I'm building my my models. I try not to have little. I I try not to have very small print areas, so that we have at least some gap fill to make it stronger. So, 
All right, so anyway, that's our setting. So let's go ahead and prepare to print this. So it's going to ask for about supports because these bridges appear to need supports. So we're going to say, no, we don't want to use supports. We want to test the bridging. So this is going to take 45 minutes to print, which isn't too bad. So we'll copy this to a SIM card and then put it in our printer. It's done. Let's remove this PEI surface. We'll throw the old one in just to keep filming off the uh, magnetic sticker. And let's get this off of here. You can see by flexing, it comes off. really easily. <laughs> this isn't coming off as easy. Okay. So the bed adhesion was fine. It was really easy to get off. Not as easy as the Yogi which just kind of fell off. So. Bridging looks okay. A little bit of drooping but not too bad. Some stringing between the uh, pointy, pointy thingies and the uh, rest of the tower. So we usually print a 237 which is the second bridge. It looks like it printed okay to me. So, all right. So we're going to use that temperature, and then we're going to print this uh, uh, bed and layer adhesion test. So I have two tests here I did with Yoyi. One was with 0.2 millimeters, and one was 0.3 millimeter layers. So this one's slightly stronger, but uh, this one is strong enough. So we're going to print this at uh, 0.3 millimeters. So that's what we want to do for our project. And if it prints well, then we'll go ahead and print it. All right, so now that we've got our temperatures set, we're going to try and uh, do my favorite test since I made it up. It's a uh, uh, bed and layer adhesion test. So it's got a fairly big rectangle here to see how your bed adhesion is working. So you have a temperature set right for that. And uh, layer adhesion, the key here is this joint. So this 90 degree joint. If you have poor layer adhesion, this joint is going to crack. If you have good layer adhesion, then this, this is going to be a strong right angle here. So this project is again available on Thingiverse. It's a link in the show notes. It's for free. And uh, you can put your own uh, lettering here if you want by modifying the program. Uh, but it does uh, embossed lettering and also engraved lettering. So that's a good test of uh, cooling as well and how well your uh, layer heights and other settings are. So this is a good test and it doesn't take too long. So we're going to render this. All right, and then we'll make an STL file and then we'll import it into Simplify 3D. All right, it's done. Let's see how we did. Grab this off of here so it doesn't drag down anymore. Come on. There. Let's get this out of here. We're going to check our bed and uh, bed adhesion and layer adhesion. So we had a little bit of trouble getting the uh, get the temperature tower off. So we'll see if this does any better. So this, with this PEI surface, I can get off the wipe move that the, the, the uh, slicer does, Simplify 3D does pretty easily with my fingernail. You want to scratch this, so I try not to use any, any uh, metal instruments on it, but I can avoid it. I do have this spatula. There's a link to this spatula in the show notes. I used to use, uh, for the old surface, I'd use this spatula, but this can scrape, so this is a lot smoother and not so sharp. Let's see if it comes off. Yeah, so it just comes off easily. So. All right, so I would say... Th uh, 
at um, 60 degrees bed temperature, this sticks a little better than the other P, uh, PETG I've been using, but it still comes off fine, so I'm not worried about that. So I'm not going to adjust that temperature. I could lower it to 55, let's say, but I think it's fine. The big question is whether this is strong. So this is the 0.3 millimeters with a yo yi You can see that's super strong. It's a little bit flexible. This 0.2 millimeters is even stronger. You can see it doesn't flex as much. This one is strong. So let's see. I think it's in between those two. Yeah, so this is plenty strong enough for our project. So we can print this at 0.3 millimeters and print our uh, Camtono containers. So this is we're going to print next. This is about a nine hour, almost 10 hour print. So I'm not going to show a time lapse of that, but I'll show you the final result. All right, so I really like my Camtono and I designed a container set to go inside of it. So it's got two, two uh, trays. It's got one that looks sort of like a pitcher. And one is like a pitcher with a handle that comes upward like this. You can grab it like this. You can see it holds quite a bit of stuff. I'll dump it out in a minute. But it goes in, just put it on one side and put it on the other side and it just mess in there. And it closes up. So the tricky part was at the bottom of the uh, Camtono here, they have this angled uh, entryway. So I designed this one so this would go above that, and then this one would could go above and then sl and then lay down in the in the base of it. So. All right, this is available on my Etsy store. It's called a Camtono Container Set. So I'm just going to dump this out. You can see how much stuff is in here. And I sell everything except this uh, Millennium Falcon code uh, cylinder. All, this, all these other items are available on my Etsy store. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Post a comment if you have any questions or ideas, and I'll try to respond. That's all for now, but more videos are coming. And if you want to see them, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification icon if you don't want to miss one. This is Beta Signy signing out and keep looking up.